Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. I um, uh, am here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also to recruit experienced painters to paint along with me. And today we're gonna to finish up on our strawberries. Um, this is what my first fire of my strawberries looked like. And uh, I was pretty pleased. The background is a little bit of ivory there. Uh, it was kind of an off-white tile. These are matte tiles. And uh, it turned out, I thought, pretty well. Um, and this is what I'm aiming for down the road. Um, I want it to be more like this. This is the final product, so. So we're gonna start painting. Um, this week I added, of course, two more new colors. One is uh, this okra, it's a golden okra. It's very much like yellow brown. So, you know, if you don't have it, don't go out and buy it. You don't need it. And the other is this old gold green. Now, so this is what I'm working on. And uh, I'm going to, I want to make sure you can see this. It's not important whether or not I'm bright enough, but I want to make sure that you can see what I'm working on so that you can follow what I'm doing. All righty. I'm going to start with the background. Um, uh, I recently changed, added some more oil to my oil. It's a little full. Um, I'm going to start by just uh, putting some of the rich brown side loading my number 10 brush with rich brown and um, I'm just going to go around the leaves and put in this rich brown. Now I know it looks dark but as I spread it out I think you'll see I need a little more oil for, oil for this. There we go. Um, and you know the biggest problem that beginners have is that they paint too oily so make sure that you remember to brush your oil off on your towel or whatever you're using. So now I'm putting the brown around in the background. And I'm just, you know me, I dab, 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 dab. Now with this brown though, you can cut into the leaves and really make them stand out if you want. See how I did that there? And so um, it's a good opportunity to do it. Now I'm gonna pull it off into the border because I'm gonna wipe that border. So it doesn't matter if I pull it off into the border or not. And I'm also going to put a little bit of brown in the center of these leaves, just down the center. And I'm gonna do this side. Oops, I need a little more of this, here we go. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go right across this lower leaf so that It's in the shadow. Okay, so I'm putting a little more the brown in the background here. Okay. And I'm gonna put a little more of the brown on this leaf right here. Oops, let me get a little more right here. And you know, when we go down the leaves, we go right down the center. Alrighty, and then I'm going to turn this way. Now my paint may look a little, and go down the center there, it may look a little shiny, but don't forget that um, this is a matte tile, and so any oil on it is going to look shinier, and I'm going to come down here a little bit, just on the tip. Now before I put the greens and all that in up here, clean my brush, and I'm going to go into I'm going to use a mixing yellow for my background, and I'm just gonna kinda pull it around. I'm one of those people that just slaps the color on there. I try to leave the middle on this because it turned out ivory. I'm trying to leave the middle a little bit. And I'm going over the, the sides, I'm going over the, um, the leaves, I'm trying not to go over them a lot, but I am going over the leaves a little. And can you see how I've done the yellow on there? It's, I'm painting particularly brightly, hoping that you can. Looks like you might be able to. And then I'm gonna take my golden okra, which would also be your yellow brown if you have it, and I'm gonna put that on the background as well just along this edge, because I think it adds a little something to it. Oh, getting a little too much oil on there, okay. 
All right, so I put my yellow in the background. I brought my okra around the side. Um, I put a little brown up here at the top. And now, I'm gonna set this down for a minute. I'm gonna take a tissue, but I'm going to dip it in mineral spirits and really pounce it so that the mineral spirits don't affect this. And I'm gonna go around and take that yellow off the sides and the brown. I'm just gonna wipe it off. And the reason I patted it is because if you don't, it's gonna start bleeding into the rest of your background and you don't want that. Okay, and then I've got it down here. I need to get it off. Then I did touch a little bit. See up here, I got a little bit of the background up in through here. And so I'm just going to take my brush and lightly pull that background the way I want it. A little bit closer to that ridge. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to, on the final fire, I did a border, um, which I think really helped. And so um, I'm not worrying about the border on this so much because that's something that I will correct. So I'm going to take, I'm wiping the yellow. I got a lot of yellow down here. I'm wiping that okra off this lower leaf, these lower leaves, because I don't really want it on those lower leaves. So, you know, when you put background on like I do, sometimes you get it on your lower leaves, on your strawberries. Okay, so I've gotten it off of there, and then I have a little more up in here, and I'm just pulling that off. Okay. Now for our new color. This is that beautiful gold green. It's called Old Gold Green. I'm side-loading my tin with it again. And um, I'm going to come and do the outer portion of these leaves with it, just a tad. And I think it adds so much to the leaf. I think it makes a big difference. And then I'm going to put a little on the end here. So let's get a little more in here. And I'm going to put a little down in through here. Pull it down a little. Oh, having a little time here with this, so let me just play with it a little. There we go. And then I'm going to put a little gold green on, old gold green, and I'm also going to do the shadowy side of this leaf up here, this one. And so I'm going to do here, here, Oops. Let's do anything about working on this tile. It is like working on something that was tinted and your paint drags on it. You have to you have to really play with it. Okay. And then I'm just gonna pull a little bit. I have an awful lot of oil right there. Let me get that oil off. But I want the color up there. So since I took the oil off, I'm going to put the color back up there. Because you'll see in a minute, I'm going to pull out those little white flowers. And having that color up there is going to really help me. Okay. Okay. And I might even bring a little brown over this way a little more. It kind of stops right there. We're going to bring it around this side a little more. Because this side is in shadow. Okay. And I'm going to just lightly pull. Now remember we talked about this for those of you that are new when you're when I'm doing this feathering, it's you take your brush and try it on the back of your hand and if it feathers really nicely, that's how you know that um, that you're doing it right.
Okay. All righty. And um, let me get this up in here a little bit more. Feather it out a little. Oops. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to take more of the old gold and I'm coming down in here. And I'm, you know what? I'm going to change brushes. I think for these smaller leaves, that brush is a little big. Yeah, that brush works better. Sometimes if you're uh, like me and you paint with a larger brush, you do have to downsize, downsize for certain things. And I'm doing, I'm doing down the center of this to the very edge. And then I'm coming down here and doing this because it's under the other flowers and other leaves and we wanna make sure that it um, really does well. So I'm just trying to get it under here. And you can cut in, if you see what I'm doing there, I'm cutting in to get back that kind of jagged edge on the leaf that's down below it. And, oops, let's do this one now. We'll go down the center. And then we'll come up the center of the other side. And then using the old gold green, which is the color I'm using right now, we're gonna do the bottom half. There we go. Just wherever you think the shadow would be, I think is more likely the place to put it. I'm gonna turn up the light a little. Oh, geez, we're having trouble with, I'm having trouble with the lights today. They're just, it's um, kind of overcast outside. And anytime we don't have real light outside, I think that the, uh, the painting comes out awfully dark. Yeah, that didn't help, did it? Okay. All right, so I've done that down there, and I'm just going to pull it gently and pull this one out a little bit, too. And then we have the final leaf down at the bottom here, and I'm going to do that. Just a little bit down the middle, and then a little bit down this side. And then we're going to do a little bit over in here. And on the screen that I'm looking at, it does look darker than it actually is. So, all right, and here we're just gonna do the edge there. Bring it down to the bottom and just feather it a little bit. Okay, so that's how I do my leaves and that at least these leaves. Every leaf is different. So, you know, the rose leaf, if I don't know if you have noticed, but I it used to be that a lot of people put rose leaves on everything. And you really don't want to do that. You want to make sure that the leaf is um, compatible to the flower. It's really what the flower is supposed to have. Now I'm taking my old gold on my liner, and I'm just putting in a few of the a few of the little things that come down the center. In fact, if you work it right, sometimes the liner will just pull the paint that's already there and the color comes out really, really nice. And then here, let me pull one here. Okay. Now, eventually I'll go back in and clean up all these stems and everything. Okay, we're going to do the... Um, Strawberries next. This is blood red I'm using. I have yellow red underneath. This is blood red I'm putting over the top. So I'm going to do a little. Oh, wait, I'm going to start this way. I learned this the hard way last night when I was practicing. You come up around, these are called calices, calyx around the top. And you do those first, and I think you get a little better outcome. Then you lightly come down this side, cross the bottom, and then hit the far side. And the far side you might want to do 
turning it upside down like I am and have it face you and just pull. Okay, we're going to do it another one. This is one of those good plates to do because you get a lot of practice. Now, this one doesn't have a lot of calices coming down at the top, so I'm just going to put a little color at the top. Now, the nice thing about strawberries is some of them are a little green from time to time. So you can add green to them if you want. I'm trying real hard not to make these overly red, but you do need to get the red on them. There we go. And it's a matter of kind of finding the sweet spot on your um, on your your brush to get the get the red in the right spot. And then I do that side. And we're going to start on this one. I'm going to do up here where the calyx are. Go around them a little bit. Okay, now this guy's on top, so I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm going to add a little bit of chartreuse to this side. Oops, yeah. To this side. Ah. I'll try it again. Here we go. Kind of oily. Don't know what happened there. There we go. Hmm. Must be oil on the the towel or the, the towel that I'm using that's giving me the problem. So I'm going to back up here and I'm going to put this green on this side. There we go. And then just come down a little. Wipe out a little of that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm way off. Wipe out a little of that. Okay. Then I'll go into the red and do the bottom. And go into the red and do this side of the strawberry. Remember we said strawberries can be... I might want a little red up there. Strawberries can be very um, bumpy. So if you... Want them to be bumpy, they can be. I'm using the blood red again, and I'm just going around the bottom. There we go. I'm just going to add a little red to these strawberries, and later on I will clean them up a little more, but just so you see that they're there. Okay. This is not the best strawberry, but I just want you to know that they're out there. Okay, so those strawberries, you would do the red, and you would do the yellow, and you would clean them up. Um, I just don't want to spend too much time on them right now. Okay, we're going to go up to the, um, we're going to go up and get the little flower. Well, before I do this, let's just finish off these calices. Um, take my old gold, and I'm just going to go, and I'm going to, now this uh, come up really close. I'm going to, up oh, a little heavy on that. There we go. I'm just going to outline one side of the calices with the old gold. Can you see what I'm doing right here? That will give it a little bit of shadow and a lot of definition. Now these up here are not real apparent. So I'm sort of outlining them so that they come out a little better. And then you can take a brush, and it can be any brush, and you can just smooth one side of it. And that will help. And I'm sorry for the way that the color keeps adjusting on this. It's um, kind of driving me crazy, but just so you know, I, I'm aware of it. I just don't really know what to do about it because I wasn't, it wasn't doing it earlier when I was practicing. Okay. 
So here, I'm doing it again, right here. Just kind of outlining them. And then you can take a brush. I like these, where is my brush? And, but it's, um, it's a real nice little brush. It's real rounded on the end. And if you go in, let me just show you real close here. And just, you can kind of pull those colors and play with them a little, smooth them out after you do that. And see how much better that looks? I know I shouldn't keep coming and going because that seems to affect the color on there. Okay. And then of course you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna do the the stems. A couple of these stems got missed. And so I'm gonna do the stems again. This one I don't need to touch, it's dark enough. This one I do, this one I do, okay? And then you would go down here and obviously do these others. Clean them up, make your stems, make, oops, there we go. Um, and you're gonna take your, your Pico Pay or something and just go back in and wherever you had those little guys, try not to make them too uniform. Wipe off your pico paint and bring out those little seeds. That's what we're. That's what I'm doing right now. Is the little seeds. Okay. So you have the little seeds there. Okay. Um, now the flowers. I'm gonna take this. This is a big eraser. It's, it's actually this one. It's the wedge eraser. See, look what that did. Wedge eraser, and this is the back end of it. And I'm just going to go up to the flowers. I'm going to find the centers of them first. There's one there. There's one there. There's one there. Okay. I found the centers. Now I'm going to just take this and wipe out the petals. Wipe it off in between. You don't want that on there. You know, China painting, a lot of people think you can get the color on the first fire. There's that color that you do in the oven. And I had somebody ask me the other day, um, how is that compared to China paints? And I said, it's, it's like tempera paint compared to watercolor. You know, it, it's, it's opaque. It doesn't do like China paints do with the beautiful, um, the beautiful colors. And so you do want, you do want to have it, um, the, the colors. And then I'm going to take this funny brush. You want the layering because that's what makes it pretty. It's like watercolor. And I'm just going to go around and soften that area there. I'm going to wipe my brush off from time to time. I'm just going to soften it so I don't have those the lines that I had. See how you can see the little flowers coming out? They're, they're slowly but surely showing up. This one down here is in the yellow, and you're not going to see it. This one as much as these. So I do have a little white. And I will put my white on there. And hopefully that'll help. Now, I don't know if you can see it on there, but you can certainly see it if you're, um, if you're on top of it, you can certainly see it. Okay. And the last thing I'm gonna do for this one is I'm going to paint the border. Get my nice flat brush, this one from Joyce Burlew. I know she doesn't make the brushes anymore, but man, she sure made great brushes on her day, I'll tell you. So, and I'm, I'm running out of dry space here. Let me pull down my towel so I can get some of that off. I'm using a French green. I don't know that everybody's gonna be able to find a French green. 
You can use any color. You could put blue around the edge. I wanted this to have that 1940s look to it. So for those of you that just tuned in or tuned in late, this is what the final product will look like when we're all done. And um, I have a little border that I did with a pen around here. And it just really makes it look pretty. Okay, here we go. And you're just going to do the border all the way around. Now, this is going to be the last time you do the color on the border. Because the next time, if you want a little pattern around the edge. Ah. If you want a little pattern around the edge, you'll do it the next time. You could probably add more color, but it's better if you can get the color as dark as you want it on this time. So, I'm going to do that around the edges and just keep going. It gets a little tricky because it's harder to hold, so you have to hold it underneath if you're working on a tile or a plate. Um, with a plate, you could do a round edge, um, a round border, and I tell you, I shouldn't have filled that oil because I filled it a little too full and I'm getting tons of oil every time I'm dipping. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to, I put the paint there, then I kind of, so I put the paint on. Oh, geez, color is all right, and we'll try this again here. Put the paint on here, bring it across, and then I just start wiping one direction, and hopefully I get the color I want. And don't worry if you're a little uneven, it'll you'll be able to straighten it out if you put a little border on it. On the final so we will have one more on the strawberries hopefully it'll be sunny out so we don't have to deal with the color changes all the time alrighty so you kind of get the idea let me turn this around I've done my border I've done my uh, dark around the top, up in here. We did the yellow-brown or an okra around the edges a little more. We did yellow down in here, and I left patches of area that are not um, filled in at all because this tile ended up firing, and it fired kind of a ivory. I think was I think it was an ivory off-white tile to begin with. So. Um, in order to sort of mix that in, I'm going to use my silk. I have my silk right here. And I'm just going to pat it a little bit because what you want to do is you don't want to have these huge differences. You kind of want it to blend. But remember, the harder you press with the silk, the more paint you'll take off. So you have to be very, very careful. But next week, we'll do the final fire on our, daisies, on our daisies, on our uh, strawberries. Thanks for watching. Keep painting. I hope you enjoyed the program, and I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.